Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for T's. We have been solving T's math problems out of this book here, the T's official study guide, version 7, 2025. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Always make sure that this book is in front of you when we are working together. Today is our day number three. We are on page number 93 and we're going to pick up from where we left off yesterday. We were working on problem. There are five problems at the bottom of the page there. We were working on problem number five, which I which I thought had six parts to it, A, B, C, D, E, F. But apparently I missed the two parts. It has two more parts. But that's what we're going to begin with. So this will be, we are still at problem number one, part G. And we are being asked to convert fraction to decimal. Fraction to decimal. Let's see what we can do. And the fraction that is given to us is 26 over 10. Well, there is really, there is really not much to do here. 26 divided by 10, since we are dividing it by 10, 26 as it stands there, it has a decimal right here. And since we are dividing it by 10, it has only one zero. We pick up the decimal and move it one place and that's all it is. And 26 divided by 10 becomes 2.6. That's all. There's not much to do there. Let's do the next one. Part H. In part H we are given 16 over 25. And again we are being asked to convert this fraction into decimal. And whenever you have to convert something into a decimal, or when, uh, for that matter, whenever you have to need to divide something by another number at the bottom, it always makes life easier if there is some way, if you can divide somehow, some way, if you can convert this bottom number into a multiple of 10, either a 10 or a 100 or a 1000 or so on and so forth. Because if you, if you have to divide something by 10 or a 100 or a 1000, all you have to do is move the decimal places however many places you need. Is there any way we can convert this 25 into a multiple of 10? And the answer is yes. You just have to be clever about it. We're going to take this quantity and we're going to multiply it by 1. And you might say to yourself, how the bloody hell multiplying it by 1 is going to help us. But the one that we're going to take, we, the one that we're going to use, we're not going to multiply it by 1 like this. We're going to use a clever one. We're going to use a very clever one. And the one that we're going to use looks like this, 4 over 4. 4 over 4 is still a 1. And since 4 over 4 is 1, we have not changed the value of this thing. Multiplying anything by a 1 does not change its value. But it helps us a great deal because now 25 times 5, 25 times 4, all of a sudden we have 100 at the bottom. And on top you have 16 times 4 which is 64. And now of course it's a cinch to convert, to divide 64 by 100. 100 has two zeros so we simply have to take our 64 which has a decimal point here. And since we're dividing by 100, we just have to pick it up and move it two places to the left. One, two. It ends up here. The decimal ends up here. And what we end up, and then because the decimal is here, to make sure that we do not miss this decimal when we're reading it, we put a leading zero. Therefore, after, after we do this, all said and done, this thing is simply 0 0.64. That's all. 16 divided by 25. 16 divided by 25, when expressed as a decimal, is simply 0 0.64. That was the end of problem number one. Let's do problem number two. Problem number two is asking us to do a percentage equivalent. of 17 over 10 they want us to they want us to give them percentage equivalent of 17 over 10 that fraction now what does the word percentage mean what does the word percent mean we learned it yesterday on day number two we learned it on the very first day percent means out of 100 that's what the word percent means can we somehow convert this to 100 because if we convert the bottom into 100 then whatever we see on the top that is the percentage of course we can convert this into a 10 by taking this quantity. We're going to take this quantity and we're going to multiply this quantity by a 1. But not just any old one. 
a magic one, a one that does magic for us, which is to multiply this quantity by 10 over 10. 10 over 10 is 1. Now 10 times 10 in the bottom we have a 100. And on the top we have 17 times 10 which is 170. And voila, we have a quantity being divided by 100. Any quantity divided by 100, that's what the percentage is. In other words, 17 over 10, 17 over 10 is simply 170%. That's what that is. 17 over 10 is 170 percent. Here's another way to take a look at it. Here's another way we could have tackled the same problem. What was given to us was 17 over 10. Would you agree that 17 over 10 is same as 10 over 10 plus 7 over 10? Of course you would. Why wouldn't you? Right? You're not buddy in sin. Of course you would agree. 17 over 10 is 10 over 10 plus 10, 7 over 10. Well, 10 out of 10 is 100%. If you get 10 out of 10 score, that's 100%. And 7, over, 7 out of 10 is another 70%. And therefore, 17 out of 10 must be 170%. Just like here. That was number 2. Let's do number 3. Let's see what number 3 has to say. <coughs> number 3 is asking us to convert <coughs> fraction <coughs> fraction equivalent of 56.4%. They're not asking us to convert fraction, but they're asking us to give them the fraction equivalent. Just give me one second of 56.4 percent. This equivalent is missing a uh, dot for the I. In case you were distraught. 56.4 percent. How can we express this as a fraction? Well, what does the word percent mean? Percent means, percent means, out of 100. In other words, 56.5 percent is simply 56.4 out of 100. There we go. They wanted, they wanted fraction equivalent of this quantity. We have done so. But we're not quite done. As a matter of fact, we are long ways from getting done. Because as we talked about it yesterday, a fraction has to have a whole number on the top and a whole number at the bottom. And a fraction, both the numerator, the top, and the denominator, the bottom, must be whole numbers. You can't have decimals in fractions. They have to be whole numbers. Somehow we have to get rid of this decimal. We need to move this decimal to the right by one space. And we can do that by multiplying top and bottom by 10. We cannot just multiply, we cannot just multiply only the top by 10 because that will change its value. But if we, whatever you do to the top, if you do the exact same thing to the bottom, you have not changed its value because 10 divided by 10 is 1. Multiplying anything by 1 does not change its value. Do you understand? Well, let's carry on then, shall we? For example, for example, I'm going to tell you my financial status. I have a whole of $37 in my, in my account, in my bank. If I wanted to feel good about it, I could multiply by a million. But that's not going to give me 37 million, because if you can multiply the top by a million, I must multiply the bottom by a million. And the bottom I had one. Nothing has changed. The $37 is still $37, because a million divided by a million is just one. I tried it, and that is not the way to get rich. Let's carry on. 56.4 times 10 is going to give us 564. And at the bottom we have 100 times 10, which is 1,000, which I'm going to leave it like this for the time being. We're not going to write this as 1,000, we're going to leave it like this for the time being, and you will see in a second why. Now because I need the room, I'm going to erase this part now. We are done with all of this part, we can erase this part, now we're going to work on this division. We're done with all of this. Let's find out how to divide 564 by this quantity. 
we can divide top and bottom by 4. Just divide top and bottom by 4 and if you don't want to divide the top and bottom by 4, you are able to see that 564 is an even number, you are able to see, we are able to see that 100 is an even number. You can divide top and bottom by 2 and once you finish doing it, you can divide top and bottom by 2 again. I'm just going to do it in one step, we're going to divide top and bottom by 4. Okay, here we go. 5 is made up of 5, 5 is made up of 1, 4, after we take away 4 from the 5, 5, 5 is made up of 1, 4, after we take away 4 from the 5, we have a remainder of 1, that 1 goes and joins a 6, becomes a 16, 16 is made up of 4, 4, and 4 is made up of 1, 4. Now we're going to do it one more time, but I'm going to do it longhand, so you can follow me as to what the bloody hell I just said here. One by st one step by step, one step at a time, here we go. 5, 64, we're going to divide by 4, okay, watch what happens, 5 has... 5 has 1, 4. 5 has 1, 4. After we take away 4 from the 5, we have a remainder of 1. That one goes and joins the 6. 5 has, 5 has 1, 4. After we take away 4 from the 5, we have a remainder of 1. 1 goes and joins the 6. 1 goes and joins the 6. 1 goes and joins the 6 and becomes a 16. And 16 has 4, 4s. 1 goes and joins the 6 and becomes a 16. And 16 is made up of 4, 4s. When we crossed out the 6 here, it was not the 6 we were crossing out. We were crossing out 16. 16 has 4 4's and then 4 the 4 has 1 4 that's what we did do you understand? one last time ok one last time now you understand what I was talking about let's do it one last time 5 has 1 4 after we take away 4 from the 5 we have a remainder of 1 1 goes and joins the 6 becomes a 16 16 has 4 4's and 4 has 1 4 well, since we divided top by 4, we must divide the bottom by 4. And now we can see why I left, why I wrote 1000 as 100 times 10, because it's much easier to divide 100 by 4 than try to divide 1000 by 4. Leave the 10 alone. Leave it alone. Leave the bloody thing alone. 100 divided by 4 is 25. So there we go. We are done. 141 on the top and the bottom we have 25 times 10. Now we can, now we can pick up the 10 and combine it and it's 250. And that's our answer. That was number three. In other words, in other words, 56.4% when expressed as a fraction is 141 divided by 250. Number four. Let's see what we can do in number four. Number four says the decimal equivalent of 3.75 percent. Well this is quite straightforward. 3.75 percent simply means 3.75 over 100. That's what percent means. Percent means out of 100. And now since we're dividing, since we're dividing this quantity by 100, it's very straightforward. You take the quantity 3.75 and since we are dividing it this time, and we are dividing by 100 which has two zeros, we simply pick up our decimal and move it two places. I, sh I left no room for myself, it's getting too crowded. Let's do it on the bottom. Let's do it on the bottom because I left no room for myself. So we take our 3.75, we pick up our decimal and we are going to move it two places. One and two. The decimal ends up here and then in this place, in this place we have to insert a zero. To emphasize that we have a decimal here, to accentuate it, we put a leading zero. And what we end up here is that 3.75% is equal to 0 0.0375. 0 0.0375. That's our answer. That was number four. Let's do five. Number five says decimal equivalent of 16 over 50. Well, this is very straightforward. 16 over 50. We just have to divide 16, 16 by 50 and we'll have our decimal equivalent. But of course, trying to sit there and divide 16 by 50, Trying to sit there and divide 16 by 50 would be a real pain in the derriere. You understand? We won't do that. Let's convert somehow this bottom into a, a multiple of 10. And we can do that very easily 
by dividing this quantity, we're going to take this quantity and we're going to multiply this quantity by 1. But not just any old one, but a magic one, which is 2 over 2. By magic 1, I mean the one that is that performs magic. That's what I mean. 2 over 2 is 1. And now we have 50 times 2, which is 100. And so on the top, we end up with 32. On the bottom, we end up with 100. Now, since we're dividing by 100, 100 has two zeros. We simply have to pick up our decimal. Here's our 32. Simply have to pick up our decimal. And since we're dividing by 100, we move it two places to the left. One, two. Decimal ends up here. And again, to emphasize the fact that that, that to emphasize the fact that the quantity starts with decimal, to emphasize that the story actually starts with the decimal, we put a leading zero. In other words, in other words, 16 divided by 50, in other words, 16 divided by 50, when expressed as a decimal, is simply 0 0.32. 0 0.32. Voila. That's the story. That's the end of the story, rather. That's the end of the story, because that's the end of that page. We'll meet again tomorrow, and we're going to pick up from the following pages whatever whatever lies on the next page. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.